In this video, we'll take a look at how to safely reference a nullable activity output in Synapse Pipelines and Azure Data Factory. So I'm in Synapse Pipelines here, uh, which for those that don't know, is essentially uh, Azure Data Factory embedded within Azure Synapse Analytics. Uh, we've got a simple pipeline here with just the two activities that uh, are required just to show uh, the what we wanted to show in this video with regards to nullable activity outputs. So the first uh, activity is this get metadata. Uh, and what we wanted to do here is we're going to get details about a folder that's in my data lake. This folder is uh, actually referenced by the data set, my folder that might not exist. It takes a few parameters, which is a year, month, and day. And what we're actually wanting to return from this activity is a list of the child items, i.e. the files within there and the directories within there, and whether or not this directory actually exists. So that's just a flag. Just quickly look at the, the structure of the data lake. We've got the year, month, day taxonomy here. We've got a day equals 14, and which has a file within it. But that's the only directory that we have within the month directory. And then the second activity here is where we're just setting a variable. And this is just to, just to illustrate trying to get the output of this get metadata activity uh, and set it as a, as a variable. Uh, so the expression here is very simple. Uh, we're referencing an activity output, just like you do with any activity. You put the, the name of the activity within the parentheses and you do dot output and then dot whatever the property name is. In this case, it's child items. So if I just put a breakpoint on this first activity, we'll see exactly what this activity produces. So I go debug. And then we see we've got a new pipeline debug uh, going. If I refresh, this is quite a quick, quick activity. So you see we've got the input and output um, boxes here. If we click on the output, then we get the things that we've asked for. We've got exists is true. We, that, that directory does exist. We know it does. We just saw it. And the child items is just the one file and the type file. OK, that's great. Um, but that's because we have, uh, we have the, the file there. Now, if we change this to uh, 15, just to, to debug again. Um, we debug and refresh. That again, um, that again, it returned successfully. And that's it, it returned successfully, uh, even though the directory is not there. Because we've added this exists field, this will always return and tell us whether or not it exists. But note that we haven't got the child items here. Because it, the directory doesn't exist, it doesn't have any child items to return. And instead of just returning the property with an empty array, it just doesn't return the property at all. So why would this be an issue? So this is an issue if we undebug that. Remember, this is the expression that we're using for the set variable activity. Uh, we, we're referencing activity. We're saying, go to that activity's output and then give me the child items from it. Let's see what happens when we hit debug. So we've got a failure here. And what's the failure? It says the expression, bloody blah, blah, cannot be evaluated because the property child items does not exist. The available properties are exists. And if there were other ones, it would um, tell us the rest of them. So this is a user error. And that's OK. Well. Really, what I want is if there are no files, then give me whatever, whether it would be null or an empty array, give me what, whatever I, I would expect that to, to default to. Now, one thing you might think is, OK, well, we'll just uh, we'll just handle this separately. So what we can do is uh, get a uh, use an if an if expression to see whether the um, to see whether the previous activity contains the output that we're after. So we're saying, does this um, does this object contain the property child items? If it does, return us the child items. If it doesn't, return null. And if we try that again now after updating that,
brilliant, it succeeded. And that null has been converted because it's an array variable, it's been converted into an empty array. So we have no files. Well, that's what we'd expect. We don't we don't have a directory for, for that date. But this having to wrap this in a, a in a in an if condition is a bit cumbersome. Is there a way that we can essentially shorten that expression down a bit? So if we go back to the original uh, expression, I'm going to uh, add the add the magic source here. So we've got an extra bracket on the end there, and the magic source is this question mark, and this is a null safe operator. So what this means is, if that property exists, return me that property. If it doesn't, return null, and that's just by putting question mark on the end of output. So if we finish here again, debug again, succeeded, again we have an empty array. And that's a really useful bit of syntax to know and it's not, at the moment, at the time of recording this, it's not found anywhere in the documentation. Uh, I hope that you will find this useful for, for things like uh, whether to iterate through things with, rather than having the whole pipeline break. So you can get a, uh, an array of files, for example, and use it in a, in a subsequent activity to, to iterate through. And if there are no files, then, then that's fine. But it's better using that syntax with the null safe operator than using a conditional every time you want to check whether something, a property is actually uh, exists in the output of a previous activity. Hope that helps.